black and white photography. As photographers, we know how important it is, but unfortunately, a lot of us struggle when it comes to actually creating a really impactful black and white image. So in this tutorial, what I'm gonna do is walk through some of the steps that I use in Lightroom when I'm converting my work from color to black and white. The photo that we'll be working on today is something that I shot purely on the spur of the moment of a dear family friend of ours um, while I've been away traveling over the last three months. I quickly grabbed this shot of him in his workshop. He's an artist, um, a musician, and he makes jewelry. And so I wanted to create a an environmental portrait. Um, as you can see here in this shot the lighting isn't great we've got a nice bit of soft light coming through onto his face but unfortunately um, you can see that the light catches from basically his nose and downwards the top of his head is quite dark and unfortunately we've got a very blown out area here so these are all things that we're going to have to address in our black and white conversion or even if we were just processing this as a color shot what I'm going to show you first of all is what is not a good black and white conversion, which is this. This is what a lot of people might do, which is simply desaturate the image. Um, basically, we're taking all the color and just removing it. And while, yes, we do have a black and white image, it really isn't particularly compelling. The next option might be to use a profile camera monochrome. Personally, I don't think this is much of an improvement over the desaturated look. Yes, we're heading in the right direction, but it's still got a long way to go. The kind of shot that I'd like to finish up with is something more like this, where we have the attention on the face, we have good contrast, and our eye is drawn by the brightness within the image. So let's get to work and see what we can do. The first thing I'd like to do is assign a color profile or in this case a black and white profile so come to the black and white section and choose something that gives me a good starting point um, I'm looking for see here the face is washed out and very white uh, and that's pretty heavy in the red channel here black and white 12 that's actually giving us um, a little more detail in the skin what I want is to actually bring a lot of character through Nick's face here which would be great um, so let's let's find something we want to start with and black and white three that's not a bad starting point as you can see in the histogram here we've got a full range of black and white from just starting in the blacks all the way up to the whites now we're in black and white what i like to do is actually analyze the image we can see here that the t-shirt is just calling for all the attention this big area of white right here um, whereas we want the attention to be up here around Nick's face. There's also this left hand side where his work environment, which was extremely small, tight and narrow, uh, I actually got this in the frame. Uh, there's a couple of things that I don't like about that. One is, again, the brightness value, the luminance is just screaming, hey, look at me. And you can also see that there is slight distortion on the lens, which we need to fix. So let's jump straight into lens corrections here and come to profile and we're just going to tick both of those options um, to enable profile corrections and the distortion is fixed and the vignetting is fixed so if we turn that off and on we can see that that does start to make a difference and our line here should be pretty straight um, it is still wonky though so the next thing i would do is in the transform dialog box come to guided and just draw a line down that vertical edge there or what should be vertical and over this side ideally we need another vertical uh, to run down this side of the frame but as we don't really have one I'm just going to force it there that's nice uh, the next thing that I would like to do as a starting point is actually use the local adjustments now this is a super powerful tool in black and whites because we're actually able to guide the viewer's eye exactly where we want it to go um, by brightening areas and darkening areas. So but effectively we're dodging and burning, but we're gonna be using local adjustments. And in this case, rather than brushing in the local adjustments, I'm just gonna use the radial filter, it is much, much quicker. Um, 
So over the t-shirt and arm, I'm just gonna draw a nice big ellipse there. And if we turn on the mask overlay, we can see where that's gonna affect. And we can just drop down the exposure as a starting point. And straight away, we can see, yes, that, you know, that's darkening that, and that's, that's what we want. Um, but it's also darkening the background. So what we can do with that adjustment is in the range mask, say we would love it if you would just speak into the whites please so on the left hand side of the range that is all the shadows and as you see as I draw this marker to the towards the right um, that um, exposure that we we drop down is no longer affecting the shadows only the highlights um, and if I show you that area mask as I move this you'll see how that is just on the t-shirt and arm and no longer all the way over the background. Fantastic tool. Thank you very much Lightroom. And let's say we're happy with that. Let's duplicate this and bring it down towards the hand and the jeans here as well um, because the hand was still a little bright. Using the same kind of technique let's get a um, graduated filter and we're just going to use that to actually dull down this side bit here. So if you hold the shift key that is going to constrain the angle to 90 degrees or 45 if you wanted that um, but we're going with this here and we want a, a sharp fall off in the gradient we're going to bring that pretty much to the edge of that uh, door frame there and now we can control the brightness of that so if we take that away and pop it back on again we can see that that's darkening down that and that's exactly what we need. The next area that we'd like to actually brighten is the face. So let's draw a radial gradient over there. Let's increase the exposure for now. It's washing him out a little bit. So let's let's bring in a little contrast there. Bring the, the highlights down. Leave the shadows where they are. Make sure the whites are up high. And we can even bring the blacks down just a tint. So basically, if we move that away and put it on, we can see that we're just brightening his face right there. Um, and if you feel like you're seeing too much of an edge from the adjustment that you're making, um, we just need to feather that in. And I'll often push my feather pretty high up towards the hundreds, just so it's a much more natural kind of look. Um, and no one will ever know that you've put something over there. Okay, let's move on to the tone adjustments. So at the moment, we want to keep an eye on our histogram. We're losing a little bit of detail up in the in the lights or dynamic range. So let's bring the whites and really bring them up for now. Feels like it's overexposing there, but we'll, we'll deal to that as we bring the highlights down. Now with black and whites, what I feel is you can actually push things pretty far, um, much further than you can with a color image because we're just dealing with luminance values, tones. Um, and not actual color information. We can be a little more aggressive with these sliders, particularly here in the presence area. Hi guys, this is Future Me. I've finished the video and I've jumped back into the middle of it just to point something out. I missed a very, very important slider in my haste of trying to do the video. Um, it's the Daddy Max slider when it comes to working with black and white, and that's your contrast slider. So. With retrospect, let me just jump in and show you what the contrast can add to the image. I was kind of feeling it was a little flat. There we go. So as we bring the contrast slider up and down, we can see the changes that's making. Again, I feel like with a black and white, you can really push the contrast slider way up, unlike me in this instance who left it at zero. So if you come down to presence, I'm using Lightroom 8.4, uh, which has got a new slider called texture. And if we push that all the way to 100, we can see that that's basically just doing what it says on the tin. It's adding texture. And that looks that looks really great, really interesting for black and white. So if we come into Nick's face here and we take that away and add it in, I really like what that's doing just for this particular black and white. This isn't something you'd want to do for um, a younger model or somebody where you want him to be um, really kind to the skin um, but for Nick he's he's a guy who's nearly 80 um, very very nearly 80 so I, th I want to show the character in his face 
But one thing I don't want to show is that hair coming out of his nostril. That's just distracting me a little bit. So I'll just get a clone stamp and just take that away. That's easily done. So another thing that is really great for um, black and white is using the clarity slider. Um, like this is obviously way too much, but I would certainly recommend grabbing sliders and pushing them quite aggressively left and right just to see what it's doing. And then when you get a good feel for it, you can then just dial that in where you feel is the best fit for your image. So we're at plus 16 for that. Let's have a little bit of dehaze as well. Again, this is, this is another slider which um, in black and white you can be more aggressive than you can with color. Um, dehaze, using dehaze on color images for, forces them to fall apart pretty quickly. So we're just going to slide that dehaze up. Um, and now as an overall look to the image, we're heading in the right direction. I still feel as if there's more to be done in terms of bringing our attention to Nick's face. So what I might do is actually bring draw a vignette uh, which is going to darken everything apart from his face. At the moment you can see it's darkening his face. We just need to invert that mask. And now we can see that we are we are just talking to the outside of that mask. Um, and I don't want to lose too much detail, so what we can do is bring bring the exposure down, but still hold the shadows there. So it's darker, but we're still holding the detail. And if we bring the blacks up slightly there as well, that's actually forcing it to lose contrast while the detail is still there. Okay, so let's just drop that clarity a little bit. Um, and maybe even bring the whites down on that surround. Yeah, that the contrast is really disappearing when I drop the whites as well. Um, so this is the kind of effect I want, but probably not quite as uh, intense as what we've created. So let's just bring these sliders back just a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is just bring a darkening um, gradient from around where the watch is up towards the top of the T-shirt, and I'm gonna darken that area down because again, I feel like the bottom right of the image was just a little bit too bright. Next thing we're going to do is move on to the tone curve. So the tone curve's a really useful tool. Um, what we're able to do here is either add more contrast by putting in an S curve. Um, we could increase the midtones if that was the direction we wanted and wanted a brighter image, brighter in the background. Um, not particularly what I'm after for this one. Um, or we can just bring the whole curve down and that's just gonna darken everything but kind of leave the highlights where they are. And that's quite an interesting pop. It almost looks like there's a pop of light on his face there, which is, which is quite cool. The other thing that you can do with your curves if you want to, which is quite a popular look, is actually bring the black point up and that is gonna wash out all of the blacks. Basically you're forcing the black area to be a lighter gray. You can do the opposite of that if you wanted to with the whites and bring them down and say any point that's white make it an off kind of off gray, off white. Off gray. What is off gray? Uh, so so now um that that's too washed out for what I'm after for this particular image, but you might want to just raise the blacks just ever so slightly. Um, I'm going to leave the whites where they are because I really want that um, detail and um, interest to fall on his face. One thing that's still bugging me is the edge of this frame. I could crop that out, of course. We could we could bring this as a slightly cro tighter crop and then it's gone. However, I actually like to include that because, as I say, it's an environmental portrait and it's part of the environment. It's the frame of the door. So what we're going to do is actually leave it there, but we're going to take this gradient that we created before and it's still quite bright on that left hand side. So we're going to grab the whites and just bring them down and the highlights and bring them down and even, even the exposure a little more. And what I may do now is just grab that luminance mask again and say, we don't really need you to apply to that dark interior, but we do want you on the panels of wood on the outside. Perfect. From here, 
the next thing that we could look at is the black and white mix and this is a great tool because you can actually talk to what was a color channel so here's orange grab it and brighten it and darken it and you can do the same with the reds brighten it darken it um, and the blues so if you're working on a landscape for example and you want to darken the sky you can grab the blues and bring them down it's it's a really great way to bring a bit of pop and interest between the clouds and the sky but anyway i'm going to leave them where they are for this particular example split toning if you wanted to give it say a sepia look or throw some blues purples into the shadows um, you could do that and you can change the balance so that it's slightly more sepia more blues in the shadows for this particular example I'm happy with a black and white usually at this point of the image editing process I will step away um, because often there are things that I think look okay as I'm processing it and when I come back I have that realization that I've pushed things just a little too far or things aren't quite as I wanted them to be and I've kind of got that feeling already that uh, the t-shirt and the jeans may be a little too washed out the bottom part of his face may be a little too bright and I would walk away come back and address those so let's have a quick look now I've even mentioned them and just fix those slightly so that exposure on the bottom part of his face let's bring that down the t-shirt and the jeans let's bring it um, radial adjustment for those and I feel they just need a little more contrast and perhaps bringing those whites back up just a little bit I'm feeling that's uh, that's much better already. Guys, thanks so much for following along with me on this particular black and white edit. I hope you like it, and hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. If there's anything that you guys would like to share with me about your own black and white processing, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Um, one other thing I'd like to add is that I've actually taken this image a little further and done a more artistic interpretation. Uh, it's always interested me um, a more illustrative look to photography so you can give your work a more artistic aesthetic and I found a really cool tool to be able to do that and that is Aurora. Um, I've actually got a link to Aurora where you can use a discount code which I'll put below um, if you're interested in getting that. I was actually doing an HDR conversion uh, video tutorial and I kind of stumbled across using it just for a single image um, and the results I got with it were pretty exciting. So stay tuned for that in my next video and I'll show you how I used Aurora to create a more artistic black and white. Anyway guys, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.